You are very good friends, huh? <laughs> 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 okay, so yesterday we started looking at this new uh, new solution, the solution uh, of the barotropic waves, where we basically considered the, uh, the linearization of the shallow water um, equations, <coughs> and uh, uh, took uh, well, we imagine that the solution of this uh, uh, linearization should take the form of uh, waves, and we call them barotropic waves because they are homogeneous. There is no shear <coughs> in vertical, so the uh, equation that we are going to solve are this one. So now you can see here a new variable which is eta. So this is nothing more than when we, so if we consider <coughs> So last time we considered, last time, when we uh, worked with the, um, with the shallow water model, we defined this as the topography bottom, OK, with the function b, x, y. And this h x y t, okay? So it was the the uh, height of the fluid column. <coughs> so now we want to split this uh, h in uh, capital H here, which is only um, depending on uh, x and y, and here <coughs> eta x y t which actually tells us what is the, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> is the, um, the height between this reference height <coughs> and the surface, in this case, of the flow, of the fluid solid. So this can be, as usual, ocean. So this is the bottom. This is the surface of the water. Or atmosphere. This is the land. And this is the uh, topography, this continuity. Okay? So if we um, substitute and rewrite H as eta plus capital H, we obtain this one. So let me just see how. To, uh, to reach this. So we started from dTU minus FV equal to minus G dx eta plus H. So we can take our shallow water model as a reference. So dTU, of course, the advection term have been remove it, minus FV, then we uh, substitute to H, eta P, capital H. DTV plus FU minus G, DY, eta plus H. And then we have, so the first term, DHT, is only the eta T, okay, because Capital H does not uh, depend on T, so we will have DT eta. And then we have, <coughs> so we can substitute eta plus capital H U plus the Y eta plus capital H U equal to zero. So let's try to analyze a little bit more this because it's very important to understand what is the um, uh, the relationship between this eta, which actually takes the um, meaning of uh, the surface height, okay, and the capital H. So 
we can express this so we can have so this will be the eta plus so we have u dx eta plus u dx h plus eta dx u plus h dx u then the same here so v dy eta plus v dy h plus eta dy v and h dy v <coughs> so eta scale as what we call delta h okay so it's like a perturbation of the height similar to what we had we had before with the row okay the perturbation row with respect to the background density so this will be delta h over t we do the the scale analysis <coughs> this is u delta h over l this is u h over l that okay again u delta h over l again u h over l u delta h over l u h over l then we have delta h u over l and u h over l so <coughs> among the hypotheses of the barotropic flows or barotropic waves we had the Gnosky number which is u over omega l was much smaller than one <coughs> so we also defined the, the velocity well the celerity okay lt which was much larger than nu so <coughs> if we consider oh, let me okay we can leave this so if we we have delta ht u delta h over l u h over l okay then u h u delta h l u h over l so just one two three uh, specific uh, um, scalings <coughs> so if we do the hello if we do the um, we compare this term to, with this term, so u delta h over l over delta h over t. So this is u over l multiplied by t. Okay? So I just comparing the terms which is the which correspond to the advection of uh, the uh, of eta okay of the surface height so u dx the 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 eta um, v the y the eta and uh, the other one eta dx the u and eta the y the v so u over l multiplied by t if you look at this is much smaller than one so it means that we can neglect all the terms <coughs> that uh, with respect to the first term to the variation in time of eta are much smaller than one okay so all these terms here are 
um, negligible with respect to the local derivative, local time derivative of eta. If we then use another approximation and we say that H, capital H, X, Y is a constant, so it means that actually we don't have any variation here, but we have just a flat bottom, okay? So it's a further approximation. We can also neglect all the terms which makes the, vari the gradient of H, so this one and this one. So what we obtain is the variation, the local variation in T, and then this one, and this one, okay? Which turns out like this. So, local variation of eta, and a term which actually is the capital, the, the mean height, or reference height, multiplied by the horizontal divergence, okay? So, of course, we are trying to make <laughs> the, the larger number of simplification in order to have a, a, a system which can be solved easily, okay? Of course, if we keep this, we will have to take in, uh, in account also the gradient of H. So it's a, it's a, uh, a further uh, complexification of, uh, of the system. But still, a system like this can be quite uh, useful, also because usually when you compare the variation of B to, the, to H, usually uh, in the ocean or in the, in the atmosphere, if you consider still large, scale and uh, um, you, you, you will never have very large gradients in the topography, okay? So it's something that we can, uh, we can consider. So this is what we call the linear wave dynamics, okay? So these are the equations for the linear wave or barotropic wave dynamics. <coughs> we can also say another thing from uh, this uh, uh, from the analysis of, of, the, uh, of the equation, or the continued equation, is that we have the balance here between the term delta H over T and the term H U over L. So since this is a balance, okay, this term here must scale like this one. So delta H over T must scale like H U over L. So from this, I can calculate delta H over H, which scales like U L T, which again, U L T is much smaller than one. Okay, so as, uh, let's say, um, sorry? For the mission on this is to its pro? <laughs> it's propagation. No. It's perturbation. Ah, perturbation. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of perturbation. So, but in any case, what we can say that these are small amplitude waves. Yeah, it's a perturbation. So it means that here we there is this disturbance, this perturbation, which is traveling, and uh, the, the amplitude, which is based on delta H, the scale is based, on delta H, is based on delta H, is much smaller than H. So these are like the, 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 the picture of the pond we, said before, we saw before. So are very small perturbances over uh, a system, which basically doesn't move too much. Because don't forget, that this is the velocity of the wave, celerity, and this is the velocity of the flow, okay? So, never forget this, okay? So the signal, the information, the energy is traveling at a velocity which is much larger with respect to the velocity of the matter. How? Exactly, always taking in, in, uh, in mind the, um, 
the example of the of the stone in a pot. Okay, so well now what we can do is to try to um, find some solution, some meaningful solution of uh, this system. So the first uh, solution that was uh, <coughs> suggested and studied was uh, Well, I don't know if the first historically, but the first that Cushman <laughs> proposed us is what it's called the Kelvin waves. So Kelvin waves, of course, refers to uh, log Kelvin. And uh, the idea was to consider a boundary condition, very strong boundary condition. So we have a system which has x, z, and y. And we have a sort of a solid boundary here. You can think like the land, for example. And then here, we have the fluid, okay? So the fluid is here, so this, we can call this area offshore, and this is the cost, okay? So think about this is the cost, okay? This is the sea, and uh, we align the, uh, the cost line with the uh, axis Y. So for example, if we want to keep the <coughs> the idea of uh, y going towards uh, north, uh, we can consider top view like this. Okay, so this is a south-north um, coast meridional. This is the sea. This is the ocean. This is the. Okay, so Kevin said, I want that you is equal to zero in x equal to zero. So I don't want to have any kind of uh, velocity in this direction, here, but also over the entire field. <clears throat> so my hypothesis is that only v is different from zero. So from that, uh, uh, for this quite strong hypothesis, I can, of course, simplify this uh, system because I will have Fv equal to minus g dx eta. Then I will have dtv equal to minus g dy eta. And then I will have dE eta plus h dy v equal to 0. Okay? So I have removed u from the, uh, from the system. OK, so the first uh, equation actually is the geostrophic balance. Okay? So the first equation simply tells us that v will be in the geostrophic balance with the gradient, the zonal gradient of eta. So how eta change along x, v will always be in geostrophic balance. Okay? So let's try to analyze this one. So we can take the time derivative on this and the y derivative of this. Okay? So we are moving. We are considering the direction, the y direction, so the let's say cost line direction, and the variation in time. So if we do this, so we apply the time derivative, we will have second time derivative, which is equal to minus g dy t eta. Then we will have the y t 
in eta plus h second derivative v equal to 0. OK? Then I multiply this one by g. And of course, what I do to remove the, the uh, term which is, uh, which is present here. And, uh, Sorry? And, and simply add. add. Yes, exactly. Um, yes, because I have the T2V plus G, the Y T eta plus G H, the Y two V, which is equal. Ha, I don't have to add. I have to to uh, to subtract. So, <laughs> so um, minus 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 G Y T. And so what I obtain is a second order equation in V. So I have removed the, the uh, dependency in eta, and I just obtain a second order equation in V. Can you recognize this kind of equation? So this is a wave equation, and uh, what is GH? Reciprocal of the square of the wave particle of wave velocity. Yes, a phase velocity. So usually we have this, which is C squared, right? So C squared means GH. So C is square of GH. So uh, one more important thing. Um, if you don't remember uh, all the concept of phase velocity, group velocity, uh, length, wave, uh, wavelength, uh, period, blah, blah, blah. You can look at the Cushman in Appendix B. You will find all the, uh, I mean, sort of sum. OK, so this is the, actually, the phase velocity. So it's the velocity with the, uh, at which the a wave travels in the y direction. So this uh, equation here, in the most general case, <coughs> so equation, the solution will be a sum of two equation of two waves, v1 x y plus ct plus v2 x, y, minus c, t. OK? So this is the most general solution that you can find from this wave equation. So what is c? So c is uh, the velocity and uh, the phase velocity. And uh, this kind of uh, wave here are also known as surface gravity waves. Okay? And as it is, I mean, now we are definitely decoupled from this. Okay? So from this equation here, we just can say that V is um, a function of Y and T. Okay? But we know that V must be also a function of X. That's why I wrote here that in the most general case, V will be the sum of a wave going in one direction and a wave going in another direction. So I will have that if I have a wave moving like this, this will be Y minus CT. And if it is a wave in the opposite, is Y plus CT. <coughs> So I don't want to go too much into detail because it's, I mean, it's a very basic mathematical uh, uh, passages. I want just to 
uh, going in, let's say, giving you the, 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 uh, the important information, the concept of what we are going to, to look. So generally, V1 and V2 <coughs> will be, will have a form which is And then so V1 and V2 will have form which is like propagation in one direction, propagation in another direction. So this is the, the wave, uh, the wavy part of the solution, and then uh, um, so, uh, a part which is exponential in X which comes from the fact that we are going to keep in account this, but also the fact that we are, um, we are having a wave plus a variation in, uh, in x. Okay? So putting everything together, because if you put this in this first equation, you will have something like dxv over v. And this term here has a solution, this one. Okay, so it means that our solution have a term which is the wavy-like term and a term which is uh, an exponential term, which tells us that if we are going toward the x, I mean, so we are moving far from the cost. Of course, we cannot take into consideration this because otherwise we will have an exponential increase of the wave which is not feasible. But what we have is this one. And what is R? R is GH over F. So <coughs> R is known as the Rossby deformation radius, which actually comes from the uh, the solution of the uh, of the equations, and the Rossby deformation radius is a measure of the uh, decreasing of the let's say trapping. So people use the trapping. So it means that at a certain distance r from the cost, this velocity here will be decreased a lot. Okay, and so when we are far from the cost there will be no more velocity. So we are having a velocity here which is uh, uh, propagating in this direction or in this direction. We'll have a velocity positive or negative. We don't know. We still don't know. But when we move far from the coast, this velocity will start to decrease up to completely uh, disappear. OK? And when it disappear, why it disappear? Because it doesn't feel anymore the uh, the cost, okay. <coughs> and the Rossby deformation radius, I don't know, is the measure of what? Is the measure of the trapping. So if you take e to the minus x r, when x is equal to r, you have that this value is one third more or less. No, e to the minus one. So if x is two r, this is even less. Okay. So is this is one definition. The other definition, or one meaning, the other definition is that we can uh, we can also write R like C over F, okay? Because C is the phase velocity of all our waves. So F is the inertial frequency, okay, is the uh, Coriolis parameter. So F is equal to pi over the period of inertial oscillation. So we know that is 2 omega sin phi. So if we consider F and we multiply when we substitute this, you will have C over 2 pi T inertial oscillation. 
So r is the distance which the wave travel at, the ve at its velocity c in one inertial period. OK? So this distance, there are two meanings. One is the distance uh, of the trapping. Because if you have a wave here, this will So this is, and this is V10, OK? So we will have, at the boundary, x equal to 0, <coughs> we will have uh, this uh, form here. When we are far from the boundary, we have a decreasing, an exponential decreasing, where the coefficient of decreasing is has the uh, the, the value of uh, of the Rossby radius. So the 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 farthest we go from uh, uh, from the boundary, the smaller will be the velocity. The other um, meaning of r is that r is the distance covered by the wave in one inertial period. <clears throat> OK, so the final solutions, because of course then we don't have to forget that we have also eta, but the final solution. So another interesting thing is that among the two uh, waves, only this one remains, OK? Because the solution says that you have to avoid to remove the unfeasible, the unphysical solution. And you just remain with this solution. So we can only have that the Kelvin waves can propagate with the cost in the northern hemisphere on its right, no. in this direction, OK? So the wave is uh, moving in this direction, and uh, its velocity is uh, decreasing along x. So the final solution is u equal to 0, v is equal to gh, then we have a general function f, and then e minus x exponential minus xr and eta will be minus h f y plus c t e minus x so over r so of course this will come from the analysis of the uh, of the equations okay <coughs> So the solution tells us that the velocity along x is equal to 0, which was our hypothesis. The velocity along y has the amplitude, which is the same as the surface gravity waves, is uh, propagating according to, uh, let's say, antiparallel to the y direction, and is uh, decreasing um, exponentially going toward x with uh, a, a rule, a coefficient of decreasing, which depends on the Rossby radius. What happened to eta? Eta is the, um, the perturbation, the, the surface height. So eta has, first of all, a minus, then scale as h, then has the same, because also eta, of course, is a, uh, is a wave. Uh, has the same uh, wavy, uh, wavy condition, wavy uh, properties of uh, uh, Fy plus Ct. So again, also is uh, moving in this direction. And then also is decreasing when we move far from the, uh, from the coast. So we usually say that the Kelvin waves are trapped by the coast. 
So, because they exist only in a certain distance with respect to the cost. Okay? The f the, if we go offshore, there is no longer Kelvin waves. Okay? So it's a little bit uh, looks abstract, this idea of the Kelvin waves, but uh, it is not so much. So, so that means it's mainly on the sea or on the land of the ocean. Is, uh, yes, you can consider it like uh, a wind traveling on the surface. Um, and of course, this can be, for us it's easy to, to consider coast and offshore, but you can also consider this uh, as, um, as the atmosphere. Because if this is a mountain, you can also have Kelvin waves which travels in this direction, always in the uh, northern hemisphere, having the obstacle, the coast or the, 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 the discontinuity, the, 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 the boundary at the right. Okay? So it's ocean and atmosphere, always. I, I just use the, uh, the example of the ocean because it's easier to understand. But if you have this as a, as a mountain, you can have also Kelvin waves in, uh, in, in atmosphere. So the offshore is like the point where the velocity is actually... Exactly. Offshore is the region where we are very far from the coast, where this term here goes to zero, and so we don't have nor V, neither eta. So as we said, being these uh, waves, so as the, the pond, as the stone in the pond, we should have something which triggers the wave, okay? So there should be something which has created the perturbation. So this kind of uh, trigger can be uh, like atmospheric perturbation, for example, can be a specific, let's say, um, discontinuity in the wind field, can be tides. So in particular, if we <coughs> consider the channel between United Kingdom and France okay so we have seen all of this so this is the, the example a real example of Kelvin Way so the lines, the cotida lines, are the line with the same uh, uh, amplitude of, of tide, okay? And these are hours, so this is 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning, 7, 8, 9, so the propagation is here, okay? So we are saying that the propagation of the, of the trigger, because the tide is triggering, so don't forget that we are saying that wave is traveling at velocity c, the flow has velocity v. So the solid lines are the uh, height. So it's eta, meters, 4 meters, 5 meters, 6 meters. Do you know this area, Mont Saint-Michel in France? If you Google Mont Saint-Michel, you will have the tides excursion can be 10 meters. 12 meters. Wow. There is an island. Have you ever this island? Saint Michel, like Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel. Sorry for my French. Mont Saint Michel. <laughs> okay, so you, it's a small island uh, over the northern coast, I think it's here, maybe some. Um, where people go, it's a very touristic, uh, very famous touristic place. You can go by walk to the island. And then the, uh, the tide starts to high and the, 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 to, to be higher. And you cannot come back because you have like three, four, five, six meters of excursion. And, uh, uh, and so that's why it's called Mont Saint-Michel or Island Il Saint-Michel. Okay? Because it can be a mount when uh, there is a low tide or an island where there is a high tide. It's a very famous uh, place. So all the French coast has a value of uh, eta, of excursion, which is la very large with respect to the, uh, to the other side. So let's look here what happened. 
So, if uh, eta <coughs> is uh, positive, so if eta is positive, this, of course, is a positive value. We have a minus. This is positive always. So it means that f must be negative, right? So we don't know what is f. It's just a function of the wavy-like for wavy-like uh, uh, portion of the solution. But if f is positive, is negative, what does it mean? That here, this is negative, positive, positive, so v is negative. So in this case, when we have close to the coast, upwelling, which is this case here, in the upwelling, we have that the velocity v is negative, so is parallel to the wave propagation, because the wave propagation always goes anti-parallel with respect to y. Of course, in the other uh, case, we will have that we will have downwelling, so eta negative positive uh, negative, and v obviously positive, okay? So, let me write, eta negative means f positive means v positive, okay? So we have two uh, cases, the upwelling case, where, which corresponds to velocity which has the same uh, direction of the wave propagation, or the downwelling case, where it's on the contrary. And in particular, in the case of uh, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, sorry, of the channel, since we, have, we know that the trigger is in this direction, so we can consider, so we, we should have to <laughs> represent this in the other uh, situation. So this is the trigger, our y plus ct. So it means that y epsilon is, is this direction, and x is this direction. Okay. So when we have here eta positive, it means that v will be negative. So also v will be in the direction of the wave propagation as it's uh, correctly. And of the, on the uh, right side of the, um, uh, sorry, and the wave will have the right side, the cost at the right side, and we will have here eta positive. So an upwelling on the French coast. Okay? So one possible question is uh, how do you explain the tides, the fact that you have high tides on the French, French coast and low tides on the Great Britain, because this phenomenon is a Kelvin wave, triggered by the Atlantic uh, tides. Okay? So it's a very simple, of course we are not, we, we cannot uh, uh, explain too much in detail, but the general case is, uh, uh, is quite clear. So they say, um, blah, 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 in English channel, showing the estuary propagation progression of the tide from North Atlantic Ocean. Lines of equal tidal range, solid, reveal larger amplitudes along the French coast, namely to the right of the wave progression, progression in accordance to Kelvin, uh, with the Kelvin waves. So I don't understand this this one or this one? This one. So we know that uh, the propagation is from e west to east. Okay. So since this is a wave which is propagating with a cost on its right, we have we know because it's exactly the solution of this uh, case. This is a Kelvin wave. So, and since the velocity is parallel to the wave propagation, 
The only case when the velocity is parallel to the propagation, so it's negative because with respect to y, is in the opposite, is when we have upwelling over the coast, over the boundary. Okay? So we have used this very simple model, which tells us that we have two cases, one of upwelling and one of downwelling, and these are related to the fact that you can have the flow velocity going in one direction or in the other, or in the other but the wave propagation, so how the trigger is perturbating in the, uh, in the medium, is only in one direction. So Kelvin waves always travel having the coast on their right. Since we are moving exactly with the French coast on our right, so we can, and the, velo the velocity is uh, in this direction, is positive, uh, sorry, is negative with respect to y. So we know that this is a Kelvin wave which currently created a upwelling on the right side, so on the French side. And of course, when we move toward x, we always have the um, exponential decrease. So the, the effect is here. So if you like, we, you can also calculate <coughs> the Rossby radius. Oh, this could be a very nice uh, exercise. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. There is also another so, um, example which. Uh, you can find them Cushman. So if we have uh, the North Sea, so the North Sea has like very simply. <laughs> so you can consider the North Sea. This is UK. This is uh, France, Belgium, Netherlands. Then we have Denmark, then we have uh, Norway. Yes. Okay? So it's, we have uh, a coast almost uh, similar, uh, sorry, almost uh, uh, without uh, uh, big, uh, uh, big holes, so all, almost continuous, which start from, the, from Scotland and, uh, and, and finish to the, uh, in, the Norway, in Norway. Okay, so if we have a storm here, okay, so a low, low, low pressure center, okay, so this low pressure center create a wave, create a trigger, okay, so it's triggering something which is traveling again with the cost, almost always, I mean, not exactly. <laughs> complete, but we can uh, represent it at its, uh, this situation as, uh, as a model, with the cost on its right, okay? So how much does it take to travel all this, uh, this area? So it's, these are like hundreds of kilometers, okay? So it's, it's, I mean, all the, the northern sea is, is very wide. So we can uh, calculate and we have that the typical H is quite shallow, is 40 meters. The total length is uh, 2200 meters. So the total length that this wave is, uh, is traveling. So we can calculate the velocity of our <coughs> surface, uh, surface wave, surface gravity waves, which is uh, 20 meter per second or 70 kilometer per hour. So the time that takes this wave to travel from UK, from the north of UK to uh, Norway, is L um, over the velocity U, 
which is third, sorry, C, not U, 34, 31 hours. So in slightly, a little bit more than one day, we have that this perturbation has traveled along all this, uh, the, the northern sea. Okay? So this is again a Kelvin wave, a Kelvin wave which is moving and is bringing the information from the north part, let's say northwestern part of the uh, northern sea, up to the, the northeastern part of the North Sea. Time taken to travel is uh, this one divided by this one. OK. <coughs> OK. So Kelvin waves are one case. Now we want to. keep all the, uh, I mean, to, to mm, keep the, the velocity. So we don't want to, uh, oh, oh, don't worry, you, you will find it on the, I have to, to tell you the, the I will, pass. sorry? Pass on the yeah, I will send you the email, okay? okay. I will do it, uh, uh, I, I hope today, yes, I can do it today. So, if we come back to the uh, to our system and we consider u not zero, so we have the full the full system of. Uh, partial differential equation <coughs> okay so we can um, we can think we can have that the Typical solution of u, v, and eta is uh, a wave like. Okay, so we are looking for waves. So if we are looking for waves, we can uh, hypothesize that we have a Fourier like solution. So Fourier like. Solution has an amplitude capital U, capital B, capital A. I, I Sorry? I, I, I this is real. So the real part of so in the most general case, you will have that the solution will have a um, complex. I mean the solution will be complex. So you will have a real part and the, an imaginary part. Okay. So since we are interested in physical solution, of course we want to have uh, only real is that solution. A? This is real. You know, A. A. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what is the typical uh, wave? So it can be like something like uh, um, A equal to capital A K X minus omega T. Okay, so this is the typical Fourier-like solution. Okay, so where we have an, uh, an amplitude which is real, so we can measure actually the, the amplitude. This one, and then we have a, a complex exponential part which is basically sinus and cosinus mm -hmm. of the propagation along the x and the evolution along t. Okay, so the propagation we will ha will have k x x plus k y y plus k z z okay in the most general case since for us this is not interesting because 
we are in barotropic flow, so no shear. What we can have is this one. And this is the frequency omega, okay? So the frequency of our, uh, our loop. So we can use the same here and say that in the most general case, u, v, and eta will have the real part of uh, the uh, amplitude, of the complex amplitude, multiplied by the complex, uh, the ex complex exponential. So kxx x plus kyy minus omega t. OK, this is an hypothesis. Usually is what we, we have when we, ha we, we are dealing with the, this kind of uh, uh, differential equations. So we can start by substituting this uh, expression here on the tree, over inside the tree uh, equations. So the first one, the TU, will be minus E omega. Then I will have capital U, and then on the exponential part, okay? which is always the same. That's why I don't write it, because it's every time the same. Then the second part is minus F V, and then on the exponential part, minus G. Plus I K X. Yes, so I K X, and then again, a and all the part. Then I will have DTV, so it will be minus EW capital V plus FU equal to minus G I K Y A and finally minus EW uh, E omega A plus H so the x u and the y v are respectively i k x u plus i k y v. <coughs> so now I can put the solution of this. Of course, the trivial solution is when u is equal to v is equal to eta is equal to zero. <laughs> So these are all homogeneous because we can put everything on this side and we do not have any uh, constant here, OK? So if these are homogeneous, I can rearrange them and put like I can write uh, using this uh, sequence uv8, so we'll have minus e, dub e omega minus f g i k x then f u then minus w e omega and g g i k y and finally i have i k x h I, K, Y, H, and minus E, W. So I can find a solution when this determinant, when the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. So this is the matrix of the coefficient, no? So it's algebra. <coughs> so if I calculate this, you can enjoy by doing. What we obtain is a, a, a relationship with this omega multiplied by omega squared minus f squared minus g capital H kx squared plus ky squared equal to zero. So when we found a relation in wave dynamics where we have omega as function of k, do you remember how it's called? Dispersive relation. 
So the first solution is omega equal to zero. What does it mean omega equal to zero? Is that since we have that the form, the um, Fourier-like um, solution has the, uh, um, the link between the omega and time, when omega is equal to zero, nothing more that means that the variation in t is equal to zero. Okay? So if the variation in t is equal to zero, it means that in our solutions, when we put everything equal to zero, so all the uh, time derivative are, equal, solution, are uh, equal to zero, so it means that we are in a steady condition. Mm -hmm. And being in a steady condition, what we, are, we have only? Yeah. Only geostrophy. So we have that u and v are related by the geostrophic flow. And we also have a, uh, non -zero, a zero divergence. So we are on a F plane. Okay? Mm -hmm. So omega equal to zero is the geostrophic flow. So geostrophic flow actually is one of the solutions of the barotropic waves. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. So we, we found um, the, 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 the case that we studied a couple of lectures ago, starting by the equations of uh, uh, the momentum equation and considering the balance between Coriolis and the pressure, we found it exactly here. Okay? But, okay, geotrophic flow we know. So we, want, we are more interested to look at this one. So from this, we can say that omega is equal to the square root of f square plus gh kx square plus ky square. <coughs> so this is the the um, yeah one one more thing is that from this point of view, so from the framework of the barotropic waves, we can consider the geostrophic flow as arrested waves. This is what Cushman said. So waves which are not moving, but are like the same, which are practically the isobaric, um, they stand on the isobaric uh, lines, okay? Or isobar, if we have, uh, uh, if we have uh, obstacles. And of course, if, since they are moving on closed isobar, they cannot transverse the isobar, okay? So they always have to remain there. So there is no possibility for them to evolve. So they are like waves having crest corresponding to isobars. Okay, so it looks at the uh, dispersion relationship. So the first thing that we can say is that we have all positive terms. So omega will be for sure at least equal to f, but for sure always larger than f. So this kind of, uh, of waves will have uh, that the minimum frequency of the wave will be the inertial one. But they can be larger. So if we have large frequency, it means that we have having time scale very small with respect to the, to the inertial one, so to the, with respect to the rotation one. So if we, uh, so we can rewrite this and uh, by saying uh, f squared plus gh, and I use capital K squared, okay? So this is uh, capital K. So it's the horizontal wave number, okay? <coughs> so we can have two cases. So one is the case when uh, uh, no before um, if we don't have rotation, so if we have f equal to zero, it 
turns out that omega is simply k square of gh, which is uh, kc. So without rotation, mm -hmm. the solution of this is, again, a surface gravity wave. Surface gravity waves. So if we have uh, this me it means <laughs> that our frequency will be included between f and this term here. Okay? So the minimum limit, the lower limit is f. <coughs> the higher limit, of course, this can be larger as, uh, as much as we want. Uh, but will be the surface gravity waves. So that's why we call this wave inertia gravity waves. Or also Poincaré waves. Why Poincaré? Because Poincaré was Poincaré, yes. Which one? Let's see. It's the same. So we can call it inertia gravity waves or Poincaré waves. Is the, the, the first one were, were Kelvin, the second one, this one is Poincaré. I'm not sure it's, but it should be, it's French. It is that man there. <coughs> so as we have seen here, these are super inertial. So, and uh, the, um, this time, this kind of, uh, um, if you remember the Kelvin wave, so Kelvin waves had omega equal to C K, KY because we only had the <coughs> We only, we only add the, the possibility to the wave to uh, propagate along y. So we only add the uh, wave number k1. In this case, we have uh, something which is more general because we have kx and ky. So they can uh, propagate along the, over the, the horizontal plane. And we can calculate also uh, the two cases of long wave and uh, um, Short wave. So, if we consider high frequency and low frequency um, limits, so the high frequency means large wave number, the low frequency means uh, short wave number. So, large wave number means that k squared is much larger than f squared over gh and in this case k squared is much smaller than f squared over gh which is also written can be written like 1 over f squared 1 over r squared okay because don't forget that r is the Rossby radius, is always our Rossby radius. Okay? So we can rewrite this form here as 1 over r squared. So k squared, k, is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So if k squared is larger than 1 over r, it means that lambda will be much smaller than r. And here we will have lambda much larger than r. <coughs> so these are the short wave, and these are the long wave. Short wave and long wave. So high frequency limit correspond to short wave. So waves whose wavelength is much smaller than the Rossby radius. Low frequency limit 
is related to long wave. So waves which have a uh, wavelength much larger than the Rossby radius. So don't forget the Rossby radius is a sort of is a constant when that we fix h and, uh, and f and is related to the uh, inertia period. So it's always the distance traveled by a velocity, a surface gravity velocity, traveling at gh in one inertial period. Of course, this is something that changes according to the latitude. Because this uh, expression here is very much important when we are close to the equator. Because close to the equator, f is going to zero, so r is going to be larger. So the two uh, cases, uh, it depends according to where we are, if we are in the close to the pole or close to the equator. So in the first case, we have that k square is much larger than this one. So when k square is much larger than this one, it means that omega is equal to so this square root. So omega is k gh. In the opposite, if this is much smaller than this, we have that omega is f. OK? So again, this is meaning that we have wave at inertia frequency, long wave, much more long than much longer than the radius, the Rossby radius. In this case, we had short wave traveling at the same velocity of the surface um, gravity waves. <coughs> okay, which are the example of uh, these Poincaré waves. So tsunami, for example. So tsunami actually is a wave which is uh, triggered by, a, by an earthquake. And is a wave which is traveling actually to the same velocity of the surface gravity waves. Surface gravity waves, yes. And uh, since this are non-dispersive because is constant, right? So if the phase velocity doesn't depend on k, it means that there is no dispersion. That's why tsunamis are so destructive, because the energy is not dispersed. So the energy is traveling in packs, and the only uh, the only problem, well, the only way to, to dis disperse them is when they reach the coast. So the wave is traveling like this, very fast, because this is the celerity, which you know is much larger than you, so it's traveling much faster than the, 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 the current. And uh, when we have here, the only possibility that it has is to go like this, because energy becomes remain constant, so wave amplitude, which is a, a, a parameter of the wave energy, remains constant. So when they arrive here, boom, they do the disaster. Okay. So also, oh, this is not important. Also tides, tides also are uh, Poincaré waves can be represented as Poincaré waves because they are uh, moving in a barotropic uh, uh, flow. And uh, uh, they are quite fast. I mean, tide can be, OK, apart from them too, which is uh, uh, 12, uh, um, 12 hours. But we, we can have all the harmonic of the waves are uh, period which are shorter and shorter than, uh, than that. <coughs> OK, so one of the possible, just to put together Poincaré and Kelvin. So, if we put together uh, omega over f, so the ratio between the frequency of our waves and the inertial frequency with respect to k, y, r, 
So we will have that the Kelvin wave is a wave having omega over f equal to kyr, which is exactly what we wrote here, okay? Because c is gh <coughs> and oh, I can write it here. So omega over f is equal to ky r, but r is gh over f, so omega equal to ky jh. Or again, c equal to jh. Okay? So Kelvin waves are moving always for all the frequencies at the same velocity, phase velocity. On the other side, the Porphyry waves have a continuous spectrum. So the Kelvin wave have, have, uh, has only this possibility. The Poincaré wave, and they also uh, pass through omega equal to zero. So this is the geostrophic uh, uh, case. Poincaré waves, which are related uh, by this uh, uh, expression here, have a larger uh, spectrum, but we know that when we are moving to a larger ky, so which means here, which means short waves, we uh, have again the same uh, values of uh, the Kelvin wave. So for large uh, wave numbers, which means short waves, we have that Poincare waves and Kelvin waves have the same um, characteristics. More in, more in particular, if we are here, we have omega equal to zero, which is geography. When we have here, when omega over f is equal to one, we have inertial oscillation. So it's the, as we have seen, the minimum, the uh, lower limit for the Poincaré wave. When we have, of course, here, so this part, we have a uh, small wave number, so long wave. And when we are here, we have uh, waves which are so, so short, so small. And as you can say, as you can, we can say too fast and too short to feel the rotation. So they are surface gravity waves. Okay? Indeed, tsunami doesn't feel the rotation. It's too fast. You remember, when at the beginning, we said GFD phenomena must have time scale larger than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So it means that frequency must be smaller than f. So now what we have seen is two solutions of uh, uh, barotropic waves, which are sub-inertia. Uh, sorry, sub-inertia. So uh, at, we, they have frequency larger, larger than f. In any case, the question is, OK, can we found, uh, I mean, is there any other solution of our system, of our barotropic waves, where we can find uh, something more similar to the geostrophy? Because at the end, OK, we have studied the Kelly waves, we have studied the, 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 the Poincaré waves, but they are not real um, GFT phenomena, right? Because we are tight, and we said at the beginning that tides and tsunami are not exactly uh, um, GFT flow. So we want something which is over the large scale. We need something over the large scale. So the idea is to consider still our equations, <coughs> but try to think that there is a perturbation over the geostrophic flow. So now we are having that the geostrophic flow is uh, a limit of the super inertial waves. Now we know that our waves are the geostrophy plus a perturbation. So we can have two 
kinds of perturbation. Do you have an idea? So we, we found uh, one, uh, when we move, when we uh, uh, analyzed the, the, the geostrophic flow, we made a very strong approximation. What well, we made, made an approximation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Homogeneous. The? Homogeneous. Um, that is a very strong approximation, but it's not uh, what we are interested in now. Yes, but uh, we want to keep it still. <laughs> there is one very strong approximation that we did and that we bring with us, we brought with, with us uh, along all the, the course up to now. Ekman? Ekman, yeah. Ekman is, uh, is uh, yeah, we, we can leave it Ekman, no, no, we, we are far from the bottom. Rosby, ROT, Rosby uh, temporal number. No, this is keep. This is, we can keep it. Okay. So what is it? <laughs> <laughs> so you remember that? Sorry. You remember that we said that, that geostrophic flows are yes, and then they are n naturally where. Where? On the F plane. <laughs> On the F plane. So we said, okay, let's take a latitude phi zero. And we consider this as a plane. Okay, so we don't know we don't want to take this too large. Because is equal to 2 omega sine phi. So if I consider a, a scale Ly, okay, which relates to a delta phi, so to a value, a range of latitude. So I'm not, I don't want to take a very small piece along uh, around the, uh, my latitude but try to enlarge so I want to have large scale flow so if I want if I have large scale flow I may hope to have uh, uh, GFD flows that is what I'm interested in and so I can try to uh, develop the, uh, the, the sign so if uh, I call A like the radius, and then I call my northern ward coordinate as Y, I can say that uh, any possible latitude in this arc will be equal to the central latitude, phi zero, plus y over a. Okay? So y over a is practically my delta phi. So the, 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 um, um, the more I move towards uh, north or towards east or towards south, I am enlarging this angle. Okay? So if I apply the um, development, the tailored development, series development, around the y, uh, phi, phi zero, what I obtain is 2 omega sin phi zero plus y over a cos phi zero plus other terms. <coughs> So our hypothesis that df over dy is equal to 0, which was the basis for our f plan, mm -hmm. now we, have, we must rely from that. So we have to relax this hypothesis. 
and uh, start to consider a new perturbation. So we can say 2 omega sin phi 0 plus 2 omega y over a cos phi 0. So we have this as F0 and all this term here we will call it beta 0 y. So we will move from the F plane to the beta plane approximation. So over the beta plane, which is larger in some sense with respect to the, um, to the F plane, we can allow the Coriolis parameter to have a perturbation which depends on the latitude, on, uh, on the northward direction. But most important, we have to define a new, para new dimensional number, which is called the beta number. Um, the beta plane of the f is no longer a constant. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this, uh, because actually, beta 0 is the gradient of the uh, Coriolis term. Because if you take the uh, y derivative of f, you will have beta 0. So the beta number, which scales like 2, um, beta number is practically is the ratio between the perturbation because y, don't forget that y scales like capital L okay, so it's always a horizontal coordinate so if we define a new number which is called beta number or planetary number this is much smaller than 1 why? Because F0 at mid latitude is 10 to the minus 4 second to the minus 1. If you calculate beta 0, which is 2 omega divided by the radius of the Earth, so it's very big, is order 10 to the minus 11 uh, meter minus 1 system minus 1. So actually, if I multiply beta 0 by L, which you remember is order 10, 10 to the third, so I will have 10 to the minus 8. So it's still four, four order of magnitude smaller than this one. So having the beta number or planetary number much smaller than 1 is, I mean, our limit to consider the beta plane. Okay, let me just uh, introduce what happened to our equations and then tomorrow we will uh, yes, tomorrow we will see. So to our equations they will remain the same. So so F is F0 plus beta 0y, okay? So we will have dTu, dTv, dT eta minus F0 plus beta 0y v plus F0 plus beta 0y u okay, is the same And then we have the usual So what I did was to rewrite the, uh, the equations for our barotropic waves simply uh, substituting the F parameters with the, its expansion which takes in account the beta plane approximation
Okay? So if you consider, if you want to come back from the beta plane to the f plane, you just remove this. Okay? So this actually is the trigger, the perturbation which gives rise to the new, the, the third case of waves, which is called planetary waves, or again, num number of a scientist, Rossby waves. Because Rossby, again, he's very famous in GFD, was the first to actually uh, consider the uh, the existence of, uh, uh, of these waves in order to explain the big uh, flows that happens over the Earth. Okay? And we, we will see tomorrow what they are. So, just to review, the question was Kelvin and Poincaré are relatively fast waves. We can ask, do exist other slower waves possibly associated with evolution of disturbances in the geotrophic flow, exactly this one, okay? So this is a disturbance. Why disturbance? Because it's much smaller than, than one. So it's a perturbation of the Coriolis parameter. So we do the entire expansion around the reference latitude phi zero. We rewrite f as phi zero plus beta y. We define the beta parameter and the planetary number or beta number. So our system here will have large and small term. So if we solve for the large term, so the small terms are the variation in time and the perturbation. The large term is practically the geostrophic flow. Okay? So the geostrophic flow, which is F0 at V equal to um, the x eta, to the gradient of, of eta, is perturbed by a variation in time, of course, plus the trigger, which is the, 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 beta, um, the beta effect, or planetary effect. 